2020. Today being February 2nd, 2023, the time is 9.33 a.m. We will now hear the case number MI2023-000437, under application number PA2022-009-264, for 3501 Civic Center Boulevard. Owner is the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Lead appellate will be Mr. Paul Gabriel. Will all parties providing testimony before this panel today please your right, raise your right hand? Do you swear and affirm that the testimony you will give will be the truth to help you, God? Thank you. Um, Mr. Gabriel, could you please have your appellates identify themselves for the court reporter, please? Yes, uh, my name is Paul Gabriel. I'm the, uh, I'm the one who filed the appeal for the plumbing board and... Good morning, uh, Patrick Montgomery, project manager for Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Good morning, uh, Jeff Fountain, um, plumbing engineer for the, uh, for the project. James Bowman, Project Architect. Dennis. Dennis Potter, Engineering Founder. Thank you very much. Um, so just to explain, I know that some of you have previously visited with the board before, but just to explain everybody speaking. how we will be proceeding this morning. Um, again, please, I'd like to remind everybody to mute until you're ready to talk because we're getting feedback. Thank you. Um, again, just to remind everybody the way we'll, we will be proceeding today. My name is Walt Krasnowski. I'm the chairman of the Plumbing Advisory Board. And what we will do is we will give the appellate team uh, as much time necessary to explain the reason for their appeal and the technical basis behind that appeal. Recording in progress. When that has been completed, uh, I will call the board members individually um, to cross-examine and question the appellates. Once that procedures have been done, the appellates will be placed in a, in a waiting room and the board will um, deliberate. When our deliberations are completed, we will come back on record, we will vote on record, and then give the appellates um, ample time for comment if necessary. Does everyone understand the procedure? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, board members, prior to today, has any board member discussed any information in whole or in part with the appellate or anyone directly or indirectly connected with this case? Mike Bellotta? No. David Hoffmeister? No. Brian Gilbert? No, sorry, my uh, computer's giving me a hard time. No problem. Mike Ingram. Mute. Thank you. Patrick McDonald. No. Thank you. Sarah Poindexter. No. Thank you. And outside of department staff, the chair has had no discussions regarding this case. Again, everyone, welcome uh, and good morning. Mr. Gabriel, um, if you would like to begin, if you would please explain the reason for your appeal and, um, and the technical support behind it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, members of the board. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if that's okay to walk through a couple documents, give some uh, background on the project and um, I think it will help give a little bit of context. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is building a new inpatient tower that's located at 3501 Civic Center Boulevard. It is in, it is in the, we're in the process right now of demolishing a garage, putting the new tower in place. But again, for context and for the site, the tower itself is going to replace the existing wood building. It's going to be adjacent to CHOP uh, main 
which is the current inpatient facility and Children's Shore House, which is an inpatient facility also run by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So as you can see, this is the current outline of the building. The building itself is about 27 stories tall, um, which is you know uh, significantly bigger than the uh, existing facilities that are there. It's over 400 feet tall. Um, with There's a couple setback roofs, but the primary roof is about 400 feet, a little bit more than 400 feet tall above grade. So the building is type 1A um, protected non-combustible uh, construction, uh, automatic sprinkler system, and it's been in review by PADOH. These are the applicable codes that it's following, um, obviously 2018 IBC and all the other codes that are required by the city of Philadelphia. What we are looking to do is to eliminate the secondary drainage in the building. Um, and the idea being that with the building design as it currently stands, we have a fairly, as big as the tower is, there's not a lot of program space that we can fit that uh, will help the project reducing any risers, excess risers or utilities in the building is helpful to be able to accommodate the full program. So what we're proposing again is to remove the secondary roof drainage that goes out and to not allow for the overflow either through a scup or, or at the base of the building. I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff to kind of walk through some of the other code implications and I'll pull up the riser diagram as well, Jeff, that you can uh, talk through. Sure. Um, so, uh, like Paul mentioned, you know, the building is very tall. It's a tight urban setting. Um, so, um, you know, the, the risk of um, natural obstructions is fairly negligible from things like tree leaves to, to block primary drains. Um, discharging to this particular site as well. Um, it's a heavily occupied site by employees, by public, by patients, um, and there is a concern from the client if this is ever discharging in the winter, for example, that there could be freezing on uh, sidewalks and become and create a hazard. Um, the the site um, obviously is being managed per PWD requirements um, using detention tanks. And so if any stormwater um, actually does enter the overflow system, um, a separate piping system discharging above grade um, could conflict with those requirements by bypassing our detention system. Um, those, those are really the primary um, additional arguments. As noted, there are two roof areas. Um, I wanted to make sure that we're, we're clear that there are we have the top of the building, which is over 400 feet tall. Um, and as Jeff noted, the likelihood of, you know, debris, you know, organic material getting in there is fairly low. We do have a lower roof that um, has a slightly different elevation that is around the, let me see if it's on this one, sorry. Pull up the ninth floor riser. that is around elevation 156. So it is a little bit lower than the top of the building. Um, so I, I do wanna be clear that we're also looking to consolidate all of those rain leaders as well. So that is um, really the basis of our appeal. Um, and we're, if there's any questions, we're, we would like to answer them. Well, I have a question. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, Mr. Gabriel, before we go on to questions, can we um, can you explain to the board one more time why the, the basis of your request for eliminating secondary roof drainage? Yes. So the, I think we we the goal is to not have, I think, two things. One is Jeff noted uh, discharge at the base of the building. And we want to be able to discharge any rainwater into our detention tank. The code, you know, has a condition that we have to have to discharge at the base of the building. The second is to have scuppers at the top of the building, which is also potentially problematic as debris could or water or anything could move, you know, could go off the top of the building. And in the environment that we're at with patient care and everything else, we don't want to see 
water coming down the sides of the building. Um, additionally, um, you know, where I think what we want, we're really trying to um, minimize again is other utilities in the building and trying to have all of the water that is potentially rainwater go down through our detention basin so it can comply with our PWD requirements. Um, Jeff, if I've missed anything else, please let me know. All right. Um, if you would mind uh, going off a of shared screen, I think we we got the uh, we got the gist of your request, and we also have this package that you're sharing with us. So we we have already taken a look at that. So if you could uh, stop your share share screen, that would be great. Perfect. Yes. All right. Um, with that, as I said, what we're going to do now is we're going to ask a series of questions. I'm going to call on the board members one at a time to uh, to remain orderly and um, and then we'll proceed with that. So we'll start with me. My question is this is this is going to be a, a, an entirely brand new building from the ground up, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Is there going to be a green roof? Yes, there are multiple there are green roofs proposed on the building. And are they going to be installed uh, before the building is utilized? Will they be completely done and installed? They will be installed at TCO, yes, at, uh, at before occupancy, yes. Okay, all right, very good. Um, that's all my questions. I'll call on the board members now. Uh, Mike Bellata? No questions. Thank you. Mike Ingram? No questions. Okay. Patrick McDonald? Yes, I have questions. Uh, so my first question is uh, the, the top roof uh, that is not going to be protected with a secondary drain. Is there a green roof on that? Is there a living roof on that? The top roof there is, right? For, not a 485, but at that 445, there should be a green roof. We should clarify that we're not eliminating secondary roof drains. We're simply eliminating the secondary the drains. stormwater rises that discharge a green. Yes. So we understand. Okay, so, protect so explain that to me, please. Uh, you're not eliminating a secondary roof drain for any of the roofs, but you're eliminating the the leader or the down and the, the downspout? The riser into the building. So we would connect them to a common riser and then we would to have them have all the water travel down a common riser. Common riser. Okay, that's that that explains that. Um, there is a green roof on the top. Okay, yeah, and there are green does. roofs, multiple green roofs on the lower levels. So I, I'm I'm looking at that. Yes. Okay. Uh, the what what I'm concerned about is not being able to see if there is a flood condition on a roof. And that's the uh, obvious engineering would, would understand why I have that concern. Uh, I do understand what you're speaking of that the client in the shop does not want to see water coming down the building. Um, there are also other areas that you can put the water that comes off of the the um, building as a secondary drain externally into areas either at the ground or on lower levels with the green roof to accept it so there aren't icing conditions for, for people walking around the building. Have you guys considered that running down into a, an area that's pervious that would not permit the water to come into walking areas? No, I think that that was um, the the challenge of the site that we were we were, we were explaining earlier. Um, that really the entire perimeter of the site um, is uh, an occupiable um, area. The the green area that we have, unfortunately, on the parcel is to the west of the main public area. So we have the parcel itself, which is. Uh, it's it's shaped kind of uniquely. It's a rectangle um, inside the Osler Circle. The square is the new patient tower. The green area that we have is on the other side of Osler Drive to the west of the plan. And so that would be the area where we could discharge, but it, it is away from the building. But that's the green area that is proposed on the site. 
but unfortunately it's separated by Osler. If you can imagine Osler circle kind of splits yeah, right I'm in the okay. middle between the two chop buildings. Yeah. So it, yeah, I'm looking it, at it now. It didn't lend itself to being able to do that. And there were some, And on the north side, just the, also just to make sure that north area, there's a small green area that is Penn's parcel, and we can't we can't bring any of our utilities or anything onto their parcel. So that is a unique challenge that we have with the property lines as close as they are. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I have additional questions. Um, the the debris that you speak of um, that is. Uh, the building is high enough not to have trees and whatnot. Um, how do you propose with the system that you are proposing to eliminate any kind of growth from the green roof, from the, the media, from the products that are part of the green roof uh, that to, to prevent them from going down into the sanitary storm system? There are details of the green roof system um, in our construction documents that indicate uh, metal mesh cages over and around the plants, as well as a perimeter of stone you know, about five feet beyond the drain. So that will catch any organic debris from the green roof itself. Okay, do you have a drawing on that available? Is, it, is that on our package? No, it's not. I would love to see what that design is, for obvious reasons, uh, to permit per, to prevent uh, any of the growth from coming down and clogging up the system itself. If you can give me a second, I will pull up the the roof plans. Um, I mean, just to get into our online doc document management system. So, thanks, Bob. Thank you. Do you have, is it, I, I'm assuming it's either going to be in 7A or 6B, probably 7A, right? 6B. That's the full exterior, but all the details are on 8500. They are. Okay. Mr. Gabriel, know, just, would, you, would you mind yes. identifying the person that in the office for record, for the court record that you're speaking to? Uh, they're James Bowman and Jeff Fountain. Um, they are with Ballinger. They are the project architect and plumbing engineer, respectively. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kelly, did you get them names? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I am seeing everyone on the screen and I can see who is speaking. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm getting to that page right now, uh, sir. Just thank give you. me one second. Do you have it up? Do you want to post it? I just want to make sure it's the right piece of it. Well, the roof plan will show it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me. Thank you. Just, we're just, it's still loading. I apologize. That's okay. Thank you. Um, if, if it's okay, can we share our screen? James Bowman is going to share his screen and show the detail. Yes, please. You, me, you can go ahead and share. And then we can post it. This is the detail I just described. The drain chamber is the perforated 
metal enclosure around the drain itself, and there's paper ballast 12 to 18 inches beyond that drain chamber. So there's no growing medium within the vicinity of the drain itself. Okay, so James. Uh, I'm sorry, Pardon me? Pat, Pat uh, one, hold on one minute. Mr. Gabriel, would you be able to send that to Mr. Motto uh, so that it can be included within the appeal package, please? When you yes. get a move? Yeah. Uh, do you want, would you like me to send that now or? Uh, no, at your, at, at your convenience. As long as it's sometime um, today, that would be very helpful. I just want to include yes. it within the appeal package. Yes, I will send that to Mr. Motto. Great. Okay, so um, the, is it James? James, you're the engineer? Architect. Our architect, okay. Um, okay, I'm looking at this. This is the standard for, for green earth. It's a drain box that, that separates with the fabrics and coming up over the, uh, it actually, yeah, okay. So this is a standard for, for any grant, green roof. There, there's always an excess box over top of a drain. And the reason for that is so that you can get in there and, and inspect the drains and clean the drains because sometimes they get debris from, from different type of uh, materials that are on the roof. Um, is there anything that is monitoring a overflow? In other words, is there a sensor or anything? If we're going to be putting this into the system, as you're speaking of, into the, the standard system, the stormwater system, the tank, the retainage, is there anything that is going to identify if there's a condition on the roof that calls us to, to, uh, get up there and do something. In other words, if there's a backup, what is the, is there some kind of sensing system that is going to allow us to know that there's a problem and that, that the roof may be flooding? Good morning, this is Pat Montgomery with Children's Hospital. Um, we, we have no plans for um, our building automation system to monitor these drains, but we do have a pretty extensive um, maintenance program where our maintenance technicians inspect our, our drains and all discharges on a very routine basis. Um, we'd actually prefer that over electronic monitoring. Okay. Is there an elevator that enters this roof? Yes, there are elevators up to the 27th or roof level. Okay. So there's an elevator that opens to the roof level. Yes. Okay. Patrick? Yes, sir. Would you like to see a um, would you like to see a cut on the actual roof drain? Because the uh, riser diagram signifies the overflow and the primary connecting to one drain. Yes. Uh, that, that, well, I'm aware of that Walt. Um, I have seen that and that's old school from from what I remember. That's that's the way it used to be. Um, I'm concerned of, and my concern, gentlemen, is making sure that it is visible that if there is a flooding condition, which is the reason for this overflow, that we're aware of it before any damage happens or any, any injuries occur. So I'm asking these questions not to eliminate the idea of doing what you're doing. I'm, I'm just making sure that we're putting a system in that's not going to have a problem. And initially you said that there are, it's tall enough for trees and debris and, and everything not to get in there. They're, the green roofs bring animals, they bring birds, they bring uh, a lot of different things. Uh, I'm a big proponent of green roofs, um, but I am also a proponent of safety. Uh, so I just wanted to understand how we're doing it. I appreciate the drawing, I appreciate um, that there's access to the roof. And I, I know CHOP has a very, very good program to keep, keep control over maintenance. But uh, I think that's, a, that's all the questions I have currently, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you would mind taking off share screen now, that would be great. Perfect, thank you. Um, next board member, uh, Brian Gilbert. Uh, so 
your one of your main reasons for appeal here is that you have less room for utility, right? Am I correct? Did I hear that correctly? That was one of them was to reduce utilities and common shafts and risers. Yes, that was one of them. Okay, so um, I'm looking at your riser diagram. And to me, it appears that you size this rainwater system for a rainfall rate of six inches per hour, which would be our combined sewer or existing building rate. You do have a green roof, which allows you to size at a rainfall rate of 3.1 inches per hour. Now, I'm just pick one riser here. It's riser G. It's a 10 inch rainwater conductor serving 12,005 square feet. You have it labeled at 748 GPM. Uh, doing the math real quick, I believe it comes out to 356. Uh, 386 GPM, which would allow you to make that riser six inch. Uh, are you using the rainfall rate of six inch per hour for, for reasons to avoid the, because I, I think you could gain some space here if you used a different rainfall rate. Uh, as far as not being able to identify an overflow, I, I think that's a safety issue where the overflow should be, it, it's not going to be commonly in use. Rate icing over is less of a problem than an extensive weight of clogged water on your roofing, I believe. Uh, you know, do, do you have a reason for, right, for sizing at it, the rainfall rate of six inches per hour? Uh, the, the reason was for the this uh, the variance application um, where we followed the code, we did take the um, uh, the rainfall rate as prescribed by the code for um, you know the, the smaller um, standard of four and a half and the three for green roof three point one for green roof areas. Um, for this variance that we submitted, we did size the piping for the six inches uh, be because we are proposing to combine the secondary into the primary and uh, into a common uh, stack. Okay, so you, you were preparing for this appeal with the, the increased rainfall rate. Well, we were considering the safety uh, of the building as well because this is, um, this is a common practice um, in New Jersey as well. Um, the you know, their entire state, they have an increased rainfall rate, and they let you combine the secondary and the primary. So using that experience, we and also the the and you know the code item um, in the current Philadelphia code of the existing roof drains requiring six inches. Uh, that is how we felt would would be uh, an acceptable way to design the system. Okay, gotcha. Now. Um... Looking at your riser diagram, obviously, without the benefit of a plan view, it looks like you're tying the, you're going to have this combined drain with the, the overflow and the primary drain in, in one, and you're tying back in immediately. Like I said, without the benefit of a plan view, riser diagrams can be deceiving with distance. Would you be willing to take each individual overflow to the riser separately? I don't, I mean, I don't think that would be a concern in, in the project. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I don't think that would be a concern for the project. So, so yes, that could be a possibility. Okay. You've answered all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Poindexter. Yes. Hello. Um, the green roofs, you said that they're on multi levels. So, is there two levels of green roof? Is that how it works? There's you... at least nine and 27 and 30. And 30. So, there are three levels of green roof on level nine, which is uh, around 156 foot above grade. There are some, the building steps back a little bit. Um, on the plan, you have the plinth, which is essentially the square, and then it kind of steps back at level nine. At where it steps back, there's two green roofs. That's, a, a, like I said, at level nine. And then there's green roof at 27, and then there's a green roof that's a small green roof that's just above that. Okay, but that's at elevation 400 and 50. Yeah. Okay. And level nine, is that um, is that uh, one of the larger green roofs or the smaller green roof, like comparably? 
comparatively smaller than the 27th floor, yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering if um, your secondary drainage could actually uh, daylight on that lower roof so that you could see if the other two roofs are, are operating properly. Um, that might be a way to avoid discharging at ground level, um, something you might consider. But then also I've heard from um, a few of the board members about the, the concern of flooding. If, if the secondary drainage does connect to the primary, there's a clog further down in the primary and there is a flooding um, uh, event. Um, has your structural calculations for the roof, have they considered that? Not just a saturated weight, but a flooded weight? Yes, they include the full weight of the water up to the level of the overflow drain. Right. Did, I'm sorry, was that a question or did you say that, that I didn't hear you, sorry? The structural calculations account for the full weight of the water up to the level of the overflow drain. Okay, so the flooded weight was considered. Okay, okay great. Um, and then just one other consideration is that, um, I guess, you know, if, if, if there was a discharge at the ground level, um, if there was an inlet close to that discharge that then connected to your subsurface basin, um, that could be a way to prevent uh, water frost along the sidewalk. Um, I don't know if that was considered. Yeah, I think that there were um, site limitations to um, the, uh, the a, a civil sewer um, being routed to that area of the building room, to, to an area of the building. Um, I think we have a lot of congestion in um, the surrounding um, site under the under below grade. Okay. Those are my questions. Thanks. Thank you. David Hoffmeister. Uh, good morning. I have a few questions here and just listening to some of mm -hmm. the other questions. Um, you mentioned green roof on levels 9, 27, 28, I think it is. Does the green roof cover the entire area of the roof? No, I mean, it's not the entire area on either one of them. No, no. So no, it does not cover the entire area of 9 or 27 or 28. Is there access to all these roofs? Yes, there, there's access to 9 from, uh, there's access, direct access, obviously, because the elevators go up through it and there's door access there. On 27, there's elevator access up there as well, and as well as on 28. 27 and 28, uh, 27 is a penthouse floor for mechanical equipment. So we have a uh, freight access and, and service access. 28 is um, our helipad floor. So we have transport access up there as well. So there's elevator access to both of those. On the 30th floor, which is the top top of the building, there's, there's a roof hatch. Um, and do any of these roofs have, uh, are they going to be occupiable, not so much for amenity, but are they occupiable? In other words, what I'm really looking for is, are there, is there like a paver assembly where it's not just a roof membrane with a roof drain? Are there pavers where the drains would actually be below the pavers? Are you asking, would there be walking paths that go over the drains or provide yeah, access? Like a, like a raised paver type roof. So on some amenity decks or some roofs where you have your roof membrane and then pedestals and then pavers. Is there any arrangements like that on this, on these roofs? No, there's nothing covering the roof drain. Right. There there's nothing obscuring the drain. Right. From its okay. And none of the roofs are used for amenities. They're not occupiable by the building occupants other than maintenance. There and is a plan to occupy a small area of the southeast corner of ninth floor roof. Uh, approximately 700 square feet of that would be a roof deck, but that roof deck would not overlap any roof drain location. Okay, so it, that would be the scenario where I was thinking there would be pavers where there would be a drain under a paper. You're saying it's a raised roof deck. Correct. Yes. Um, 
the riser diagram indicates a combo type of drain. Is that like a froet drain where you have your primary and then you have your uh, secondary with a standpipe above it and it's one drain body with two outlets? Or exactly. are we that's, that's correct. Okay, so it's two outlets at one drain location? Correct. So in your green roof areas, that would be the same type of drain. It would just have the mesh around it. You'd have your combo drain in that same arrangement. Yes, that is correct. And there are roof drains from level four up through the building. Uh, you specifically mentioned 27, 28, and nine. The riser diagram indicates combined primary and secondary below the roof deck, including down to level four. Is it the intent for this variance request that all roof trains in this building be tied to primary as proposed? Yes. yes. And then the last one here, thank you, Sarah, for bringing up the structural. Uh, the, uh, the statement was is that the structural was designed to accommodate ponding up to the level of overflow. Uh, assuming I, I don't know the elevations of the roof in, in relation to the elevation of the access, uh, whether or not the level of overflow is above the level of access, whereas by the time it ponded, before it was able to enter, a, let's say a four inch tall standpipe, it would enter over the uh, door tread or whatever you want to, however that would be going back into the building. Um, I would think that the structural design would have to accommodate ponding up to the highest level where it could overflow into either the building or over the parapet if we were assuming that the primary roof drain was blocked at that point. So I'm just noting that. Uh, when we deliberate, we would, we would talk about that, and that could be a, a, a uh, provision that would have to be made uh, if, if this was granted. Um, well, I have no further questions. Thank you. Bill Dobbins? No questions. Michelle Brisbane? I don't have any questions. Bob Gladehill? Uh, no questions. Shane McNulty? Uh, no questions. Any other board members have a redirect? All right. Um, Mr. Gabriel, any final comments from you or your team before we enter into the deliberations? No. Uh, thank you for your consideration, Mr. Chairman. Okay, okay thank you. Um, at this time, the appellates will be placed into a uh, waiting room. Uh, Mr. Kelly, we are now off record, please. Yes, Chair. Sure. We continue to hear the case MI-2023-000437 for 3501 Civic Center Boulevard. Uh, the board has deliberated and has taken into consideration all the testimonies, drawings, and information provided. Uh, board, what say you? Uh, Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to deny the appeal. Thank you. Do I have a second? Patrick, you're muted. Yeah, second. Uh, I, I second. Okay, thank you. Um, I will now commence to poll the board. Um, there's a motion on the floor to disapprove the appeal. Um, I will be taking a vote to concur with the motion to disapprove. Uh, Mike Bellotta? Abstain. Abstain, thank you. David Hoffmeister? Deny. Brian Gilbert? Deny. Mike Ingram. Denied. Patrick McDonald. Deny. Sarah Poindexter. Deny. And the chair votes in the negative. Um, 
Mr. Gabriel, uh, as you heard, the, your appeal has been denied. Um, you do have some options. I, I would like to point out what your options are. You could appeal our decision to um, Commonwealth Court or Civil Court. You also have the option to um, challenge our decision before the Board of Building Standards if you so choose to. Um, do you have any questions for us, or can we uh, can we add any clarity for you? Or one, uh, Mr. Chairman, one second, if I may confer with the building owner. Um, I do have one. Mr. Chairman, if we were to propose putting BAS um, sensors at the drains, um, at the drain assembly, would it be possible to um, include that as part of the variance and change our position? Um, let me get a ruling from the department whether or not we could um, accept that as a proviso or not. Uh, Mr. McNulty, would, would we be able to consider that as a proviso or would that have to be a different request? I'm sorry, you broke up there. Please, re, re, what's the request? Mr. Gabriel? Sir, it would be to add BAS sensors that were previously not included as part of the application as a condition for the variance at um, the overflow, uh, the drain bodies of the overflow drain. Well, I mean, that would be up to the board if the board was willing to add a proviso to grant approval, they could certainly do that. But I don't know that that would sway their decision. That would be up to them if they want to go back into reconsideration. Okay, thank you. So the record, please let the record indicate that um, we can consider that as a, as a provision for approval. Mm -hmm. Unfor unfortunately, for the sake of time, um, Mr. Gabriel, we're, we're going to have to go back into deliberations so that I can pose your question to the board. Uh, Mr. Motto, if you would be kind enough to, to remove the appellates again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kelly, we are now off record. Let's back on record. Thank you. We continue to hear the case MI 2023-000437 for 3501 Civic Center Boulevard. Um, Mr. Gabriel, the board deliberated um, and evaluated your proviso of a, a building sensor system, and it will not change the board's uh, vote. All right, we we do uh, we do appreciate you offering that proviso, um, but it, it it has not changed the outcome of the vote. Thank you. Any Mr. any Chairman. other any other questions or uh, clarity that we that we may be able to add for you folks? It, 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 Mr. Chairman, if you could provide, I think some understanding of uh, why the board voted that way would be very helpful. Um, basically, Mr. Gabriel, uh, safety concern. Uh, there, there, there's a concern of safety, and there's also a concern of remaining within the spirit of the code. So there, it, it, it would appear to this board, um, given all of your testimony, which was great. We, we, we greatly appreciate the fact that you know you provided excellent. You and your team provided excellent testimony. We still feel that um, it, there's a, there's a concern of safety. And you know the secondary system can easily be retrofitted or put into the new building to still remain within the spirit of the code. Okay. All right. Thank you for the feedback. Thank not you, members a, of the board. Not a problem, and thank you. Um, with that, case number MI two zero two three zero 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 four three seven is now concluded. Mr. Kelly, we are now. Please show us off record. Today being February 2nd, 2023, the time being 1047 AM, we will hear case number MI 2023-000437 under application number PA 2022-009-780 
for 2100 Benjamin Franklin Parkway, owner CP2023, lead appellate Paul, I'm sorry, um, Aguiletti. Arrogetti, yes. Thank you. Um, would everyone that's going to be providing testimony to this panel today please raise your right hand? Do you swear and affirm the testimony you are about to give is true so help you God? I do. I do. Thank you. Could individually you please identify yourself for the court record, please? Good morning. I'm Paul Aragetti, Senior Associate, Senior Project Manager with Ballinger. We are the Executive Architect, Architect of Record for the project. Um, my name is Craig Morton. I'm an associate with Aegis Property Group. We are the project manager or owner's representative for Calder Gardens. AJ? Yes, I, AJ Prasad, uh, life safety consultant to uh, Ballinger. Uh, Euphemia O'Connor, uh, project architect, Ballinger. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so just to explain the way that we will be conducting the hearing today, we will be asking, we will give you and your team ample time to explain your uh, appeal and the nature of your appeal. And um, at that time, one at a time, the board members will ask you some questions and we will cross-examine. We will give you time after that if you need to add anything before the board enters into deliberations. When that is concluded, uh, we will go off record. We, the board will deliberate. We will then come back and we will um, vote on record on your, um, on your request. I apologize uh, for running late. Um, we appreciate your patience and we're sorry if we affected your time. Uh, board members, Prior to today, has any board member discussed any information in whole or in part with the appellate or anyone direct, directly or indirectly connected with this case? Mike Bellotta. No. Dave Hoffmeister. No. Mike Ingram. No. Brian Gilbert. No. Patrick McDonald. No. Sarah Poindexter. No. Uh, let the record indicate outside of department staff, the chair has had no communication. All right, with that, um, Paul, it, the, the floor is yours. Please take as much time as you need to um, explain the nature of your request. Sure, thank you. And thanks to the board um, for hearing us today. Maybe I'll take a couple minutes just to give you a brief overview of the project in case you didn't get a chance to look through the drawings in any detail. Um, this project is Calder Gardens. It's a dedicated museum um, facility for the artwork of Alexander Calder. And it will be located on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, south side of the parkway between 21st and 22nd Street. The facility is approximately 18,000 gross square feet. It's a relatively small structure just with one uh, floor above grade, and the majority of the galleries are below grade, one floor. Uh, and the reason for our appeal today, um, we are, the owner is, is hoping and requesting to provide a gender neutral facility for the toilet facilities. And we understand that under the current Philadelphia Plumbing Code, separate uh, gender facilities are required. Um, I, if I can share a drawing, I'll just help to orient the, the board. Yes, please. So I will just share the gallery level to jump right to the toilet facility. If you want me to go into any of the drawings for context, I'm happy to do that. This is a, um, a plan drawing of the gallery level, full scale. Uh, I'm sorry, one eighth scale, so you can do the whole floor. Um, basically, when you come down all the spaces, you see my cursor, we have large galleries in the middle of the building. We have a smaller kind of gallery off to the east side here on the right. Um, and we also have a multi-purpose room to the left here, as well as an outdoor gallery space in the upper left corner. 
the toilet facilities for the galleries, the public spaces are on the lower level here. Um, required our understanding from our calculation, we're required to provide um, a total of six uh, water closets, two male, four female. We are providing seven water closets. We're also providing requests to provide three um, lavatories uh, per table 403. We are providing three. I'm going to go ahead and zoom over to the detail of the bathrooms. Please let me know if you can't see anything. So again, as we zoom in, we are providing a total of seven water closets, including one in a sort of family assist um, room, including a lavatory and toilet in that closed room. All of these toilet rooms would be you know, full height partitions, uh, full height drywall partitions with a regular door, as well as dedicated exhaust and lighting in each of these compartments. And then we have the two of the three lavatories public outside, the third lavatory as part of the, the um, single use sort of family assist room. And uh, as we indicated in our appeal, um, the owner is just requesting the gender neutral because it's a small facility, there'll be a fluctuation of gender, you know, according to the time of day, day of the week, this feel like this best serve their needs to accommodate the occupants and the visitors and you know, prevent backups and wait times into the gallery spaces. Paul, pardon my interruption, but while you have the drawings you're sharing with us, could you show us um, where there is a janitor sink, if any? Sure. I'll zoom out here. The janitor sink is right across the hallway. You can see my cursor, Mark Janitor G014. Yeah. I, oh, is, is that in the left hand side there, if you will? Yeah, that, that is the sink, correct. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you clarifying that for us. Please continue. Sure. Um, I think that's essentially the, the uh, sort of the gist of our, our appeal here today. Um, we do recognize the current, the current code, you know, does not allow for this gender neutral, requires separate sex facilities. Um, we are looking at the, the 2021 version of the IPC, which does sort of um, allow for this gender neutral uh, single combined facility. And for a sec exception six, to section 403, sorry, I don't have the exact number. But again, as they indicate in the commentary to that, part of the reason for allowing it is to, to allow a facility such as this, museum, conference, convention center, et cetera, where there'll be a fluctuation of visitors across the time, across the day, sort of allow to better serve uh, the population, the visitor uh, to the facility. I will just point out for your for context, if it's helpful, um, these are all the public bathrooms. Um, we are providing, there's a sort of small administrative wing at the upper floor, the gray, at grade of the building, at the east side of the facility. And we are providing a separate uh, unisex bathroom there as well for the limited, we have about 10 or 11 at maximum um, employees who might be using this space. So that's another, that's over and above the seven we're providing for the museum visitors on the lower level. One other interruption, if I may, if you could explain to the board, clarify to the board, so we understand moving forward, the different levels. You mentioned sure. there's, there's three different levels. There's a, a main level, a lower level, then a mezzanine level. Could you explain the levels for, for clarity for us, please? Absolutely. Again, let me know if I need to zoom in for clarity, but this is the grade level. So this is at grade, Ben Franklin Parkway is to the top of the page here. So as the public would enter through this circular disc into the main lobby over here to the left, that's basically a ticketing area, a small retail area and a coat, coat locker check area. Then the, um, Visitors would proceed down to the gallery levels via the elevator or the stair at the bottom of the page. Let me go down to the next level. Let's 
All right, bear with me. The mezzanine level is actually mostly a pass-through level. So as you come down the stairs, there is a, uh, a sort of a landing here, which allows you to look over into the double height um, galleries to the east and the north, and then proceed down um, the stairs to the lower level. There's also a storage area here. Very limited kind of visitor program on this mezzanine level. And then the primary sort of visitor level, again, is the gallery level, which is below grade. There are interior art galleries off to the right side here. The circular area, open plan gallery, double height tall gallery at the south with a sort of low gallery underneath that mezzanine level. And then off to the right here, there's a curved gallery which surrounds the sunken garden. That's viewable, but not occupiable. Off to the left here, as you proceed down this corridor past the bathrooms, you can proceed from this vestibule into some outdoor gallery space. This quasi gallery is a, a semi-enclosed space. It's covered to the elements, but open to the air at the north. And what's called the vestige garden has a couple levels, a lower level and a, it's not shown this drawing, but a mid-level viewing platform for uh, outdoor sculptures. And then finally, at the left side here is multi-purpose room, um, can be used for meetings, uh, gatherings, uh, potentially for art, art storage as it gets uh, delivered and acclimated to the space. So as it says, multi-purpose, um, just a space for about 49 people to allow um, various, various uses. Thank you for explaining the orientation of the levels to us. It's very, very helpful. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, does that conclude your your particular presentation? Uh, yeah, I'll just ask my colleagues, particularly owners, rep, is there anything I'm missing that they want to clarify in terms of the owner's goals for the project or interest in, in this uh, gender neutral restroom? I believe I covered all, but I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, I think briefly, I mean, it's for two reasons, right? I think that this owner in particular is sensitive to the issues surrounding uh, gender, uh, you know, in this decade and, and so on. But I also think it has a lot to do with the functional aspects of operating a museum of a modest scale, whereby um, school groups on a weekday might come in and be from a all girls school or an all boys school. And, you know, not having the burden of, you know, creating large scale um, toilet facilities, um, or having separate facilities, but they are undersized for the volume of kids that could be of a certain gender themselves. You know, it, it it's really a benefit to the, the operations of the building, I think, to enable them to um, be, I guess, be neutral um, and just share a hand washing sink, um, but also have, you know, full toilet accessibility, um, you know, accessible toilet space as, as it does, as well as family, uh, accommodations such as, you know, diaper changing stations and things like that. So I think the layout is very, um, as the owner, you know, it, it's very successful in giving um, the visitors a really positive experience um, and also the privacy, you know, that one would uh, want to have in a, in, a, in a restroom facility. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from your uh, team would like to make a comment? Okay, great. With that, um, could you please uh, remove the shared screen and we'll go back on full screen. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Now what we'll do is I'll call on the board members individually and ask if they have any questions for you. Um, starting with myself, um, just to put in record, <clears throat> to clarify, your toilet compartments, you testified that the, the walls will go floor to ceiling. The doors will be completely from um, the complete opening, will cover the complete opening, and there will be individual ventilation and sprinkler within the compartments. Am I correct? That's correct, as well as individual lights in the park. Fantastic. And there is an elevator. 
in the building for handicap Correct. accessibility. Okay. Correct. Um, there is a mop basin. Uh, I you thank you for your presentation. It was it was very detailed. I appreciate that. With that, um, Mike Bellotta, do you have any questions? No questions. David Hoffmeister. No questions. Mike Ingram. Yes, uh, you mentioned the uh, stall areas, uh, drywall. Uh, they'll be uh, impervious surfaces. As of now, the all the stalls have full height uh, ceramic tile on all the walls. Did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. And then uh, for clarity, uh, we're entering at the grade level and we're going through the mezzanine and then down to the lower. That's correct. You would proceed down either by stairs or directly from the elevator from the grade to lower level. Okay. On the mezzanine level, is there something uh, on the display there or is it just a passage or balcony? It's just passage. No artwork, no display. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian Gilbert. Uh, so I have a couple questions for you. One, the the bathroom stalls, they, they're all our individual compartment. They have locking doors, correct? Correct. So you you have, as every museum does, school tours, uh, young children potentially going in there. With the locking door, have you considered any kind of pull string or, or emergency notification system if a child were to be locked or... or have an incident in the bathroom. That's a very good point. Um, we're still sort of finalizing the security and hardware package, but I think that's a, something we'll we definitely will consider that for sure in you know the handicap stall. But it sounds like it's a very good idea for school groups as well. Uh, so um, certainly can be considered and added to the project. Um, now, just your multi-purpose area. I, I get it. You're going to have one event there one day and a completely different event there any other given day do you plan on having any catered events there there could be catered events there yes okay my, my concern with that is the lack of, of a hand sink for catering staff or food service personnel it's just a concern i would like to note we're still we're still evaluating the scope of the catering but in any case there will certainly be a hand sink um in, just in that not shown currently Okay. Well, I, I, let me. Yeah, I think we did. We perhaps did show it. Um, it may be on the, not on these detailed plans, but absolutely, hand sync contemplated for the staging area. Thank you. You've answered my questions. Thank you, Patrick McDonald. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. My my question is, um, there, there it doesn't look to have any urinals in this bathroom. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, um, is there any concern on your part that, uh, I mean, we've all stood out, walked past the women's room in many different facilities where there's a line around the corner and uh, men go in and out, fortunately for, for the male population. Um, is there any concern or has there been any discussion over the, the idea that it might get overrun and the males would be in line with the females and that it would be a slower process all around or is that a concern at all? Um, interesting question. Uh, perhaps we're focused more on the opposite side, you know, that we've all been experienced where uh, men are going back and forth and women are waiting longer and allow the gender neutral facilities thought that might be able to balance out. Um, and I'll ask Craig if you have any thoughts from the owner's perspective um, in terms of that sort of flow. I mean, I, I don't think it's a, it's been a primary concern. I mean, I, I obviously I experienced the phenomenon you're, you're, you're speaking about. Um, but I think in this environment, especially for the day to day, you know, museum visitor experience, I think um, it shouldn't be the same kind of thing that we experience at like halftime at a sporting event or intermission at a, at a play where there's kind of, you know, rush hour, so to speak, on, on the facilities. And I think it should be um, more evenly uh, interspersed and therefore that kind of uh, queuing up shouldn't, um, I, don't, I don't say it's impossible, but I don't, I don't anticipate it being a, a major issue. Um, but to your point, I think 
Um, we do have folks from the Barnes Foundation uh, heavily involved in this project as they will be in charge of managing the building ultimately. And so from their perspective, I can say they have not um, raised this as an issue. Um, and they have obviously existed as a, uh, a museum space for you know a, a decade plus at this point. So um, your point's well taken, but I, I can't say that it's been um, the chief concern of at least the Barnes folks. Okay, so beyond the beyond the concern, does it make any sense to have one of the stalls have a urinal in there instead of a water closet? Um, I think that probably, and I, I, I don't want to misspeak on a topic I'm not extremely versed on, to be honest, but I think that would um, run counter to the, the, the other reason for this uh, change, right? The, the, I think a big one is function and a big one is the, the uncertainty of, of school groups and all the rest of it. But I think the um, the sensitivity of it being a urinal, I don't think would it would run counter to some of the goals there coming from the owner. Now, I can't speak um, really uh, at length on that topic, but I think I would say that they would probably prefer not to uh, outfit one of the spaces with just a urinal, even though it has benefits, like you said. Got it. Got it. It's my only conversation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I would like the record to indicate that under the Philadelphia Plumbing Code, your, the urinals are not required in this particular application. So right. even though they're, they're, you can put them in, there is a, um, there is a requirement that they're, they're not, you don't have to put them in. So I just want to note that for record. Thank you. Yep. Sarah Poindexter. No questions, great presentation, thanks. Thank you. Bill Dobbins. No questions, thank you. Michelle Brisbane. Okay, uh, Bob Gledhill. We might have lost. Michelle and Bob. No, Michelle's on. Bob's like on. Bob may have stepped away, it looks like, from his camera. I think we'll take a five minute recess until uh, Bob gets back. I want to make sure that he does not. Uh, have any questions as as the department representative? Uh, I want to make sure that um, they're they're represented on any questions. So at this time, Mr. Kelly, we can go off record. We continue to hear case number MI two zero two three zero 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 four three seven for twenty one hundred Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Um, Bob, we took a short recess um, to allow you to come back into the meeting. The board has asked questions uh, of, the, of the appellate's team with regard to the layout and the bathroom configurations. Um, we're curious to know, do you have any questions or comments? I have no questions or comments. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I believe we also have to hear from Michelle. Michelle Brisbane. Oh, no question. Uh, I I did call on her, Pat. That's okay. Oh uh, yeah, but she she wasn't she wasn't there. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I had to take a call. Not a problem. Not a problem. Um, Paul, do you or your team have any final or additional comments for the board? Uh. No, just to reiterate, I think the, the owner is very excited to bring this project to Philadelphia and do feel that gen and neutral restrooms will you know, best serve the facility and sort of the visitors who will be enjoying the facility um, into the future year. So we appreciate your consideration of our request and uh, look forward to your decision. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thanks to your team um, for a very well done presentation. So at this time, the board will enter into deliberations. You will be put into a waiting room 
uh, when our deliberations ended, we'll, we'll bring you back in and um, render our vote on record. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, please show us off record. We continue to hear case number MI-2023-000437 for 2100 Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, we, we, we've taken your... Um, We've taken your case under very, very, very strong suggestion and discussed it in great detail. What we would like to say before we go any further is this board, if you're approved for this appeal, we would really like to see you um, look at measures for some sort of an emergency notification. You know, I know you, you, you touched on it in your testimony that you're looking at that. Um, the board has some strong feelings with regard to someone being in one of them enclosures and possibly having a medical emergency or something like that. So we would ask you to please um, look at that issue with a great deal of emphasis. Um, Absolutely. Even the, uh, even the door, the door handles on there, there could be some sort of indicating door handles, whether occupied or unoccupied, which may trigger personnel to know if someone's been in there too long or, so we would just, we would, we would respectfully like you folks to consider um, some of the safety concerns as far as someone being in there and there being an emergent situation. Uh, with that uh, board, what say you? Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Um, okay, I'll second. <laughs> My motion God. to approve. Sorry. All right. Mike Bellotta made a motion to approve the um, the request. It was seconded by Patrick. Motion on the floor to <coughs> approve the appeal. Um, the vote will be to, for to uh, approve. Mike Bellotta. Approve. David Hoffmeister. Approve. Mike Ingram. Approved. Brian Gilbert. Approved. Patrick McDonald. Approved. Sarah Poindexter. Approved. And the chair votes in the affirmative. Uh, Paul, uh, as you heard, the board has approved your appeal. Thank uh, you. We, um, we commend your, your uh, presentation. It was very, very well done. It didn't leave a lot of question, and, um, but I, I, we would like you to leave knowing the board's concern as far as you know, additional safety within the, the, the stall enclosures. Thank you. I'm sure the Barnes uh, would agree with that, and we'll, we'll look to include that in the project. Uh, do you have any questions or any additional comments before we conclude? Uh, no, I assume Phil will kind of procedurally give us whatever paperwork we need to submit to LNI to move this forward. And so, um, so uh, uh, here's what will happen there. Um, our, our recommendation has to go to the commissioner to be signed off on. That generally doesn't take too long. But if you don't hear anything back from Phil, uh, you know, within a week or so, I would, I would suggest contacting him. Um, and then what will happen is when you go in for plan review, they'll already have our decision on record. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So thanks again to the board for your time today. And, um, and we we'll look forward to welcoming you to the museum in a couple of years. So <laughs> thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. With that, case number MI-2023-000437 is concluded. Uh, Mr. Kelly, could you please show us off record?